What you should be doing is thanking me for bringing him home. I killed a man for that money, Diana. And I ain't tell you to do that. Just, you act on I don't fucking let this around here. You don't know who you fucking with, little girl. I'm a true husband out of jail, and I'm fucking with you. <laughs> fuck off. What, is there some reason you don't want Poppy home? Get the fuck out of my house before I kill you in here. Our episode six picked up the steam. This was a great episode. And before we get started, let's just give a big birthday shout out to one of the foundations of this whole entire Power and 50 universe, Mari Hartwood. Happy birthday, my brother. But the opening scene has been controversy for a lot of females out there. Me and a lot of the fellas, we on Diana's side. The females is still talking this craziness about Diana being res disrespecting the mom in that moment. But ladies, I want you guys to think of their relationship as a game of chess, not checkers. What Diana did in that moment is nothing compared to the overall picture of how Monet has been placating her damn life. And so I didn't have a problem with it, but I am glad for the sake of Miss K tiff over there at the spot that she was able to choke her and make some of you ladies happy because fellas more ladies watch power than the men and this is going to be my episode six breakdown a lot of things in here a couple of easter eggs let's jump on into it if you're finding me for the first time please subscribe to the channel be sure to turn on notifications so when i drop videos you get them i am doing my podcast again Check out the podcast. Link is in description. And also come follow me on IG. A lot of you guys want to communicate with me. You want to talk power and some of the other shows we review. Just hit me on IG. It's easier for me to communicate with you all. And I got another clip I want you guys to see where Lauren says a word that is so funny. I just got to go ahead and play it at the start. Oh, because you were too busy fucking Zeke? Zeke, you're fucking him. Don't play with me, okay? You got over once. Trust me, there's not going to be a second time. Zeke and I are none of your business. We are about to be everyone's business, Professor Milgram. <laughs> I know some of you all are ready to get rid of Professor Addiction. And did you guys see the way Lauren said, fucking him? <laughs> Yo, Lauren, Lauren is that little car that can't get enough. It can't get enough oil. It's going to get oil, and then it's going to leak immediately because you would think she'd be done with Tariq by now, but she's not. And you can cool believe Lauren might be the one responsible for killing Professor Addiction, even though y'all don't think that's going to happen. Keep an eye on it. Let's start from the beginning. They've got, I mean, when I talk about a party, they threw a party that only a Hispanic family can throw. The Tejadas was getting down in this party. And in this party, you see Lorenzo introducing Diana to his crew, some of the people that was in jail with him, Kino and what may have you. And they all wishing Diana well, talking about how beautiful she is and how they wish they had daughters that would get them out of jail, yada, yada, yada. But then it picks up from there because then we get Zeke and Drew coming to the party not invited by Lorenzo, but invited by Monet, and she ain't even say nothing. And did you see the look on Zeke's face when he see all these people in here? That's the look of, she don't know nothing. She don't know nothing. Look, Monet, you about to have another kid that's going to be very, very upset with you. You got three now that's upset with you. You got one man who's in the dark, and then you got another man that you about to make mad this episode in Mecca. A lot of this stuff is going to fall on Monet's head. And a lot of people are seeing parallels here with Diana and Tariq in terms of the way they treated their parents. Because Tariq is the reason Ghost is dead. And could Diana be the reason Monet dies? I don't see Monet dying this season. It'd just be too, too much too quick. And her salary is too big. So I don't see her dying this season. Little Guap shows up in this party, my people. For some reason, Little Guap's hand has mysteriously healed within the course of three weeks. Damn, Little Guap must went and stuck his ass up in that hyperbaric chamber because don't nobody heal that fast. And then he ain't learned his lesson yet. He up here trying to take pictures with Lorenzo, and Lorenzo is telling him, look, bro, that ain't something you do. You know, Big Guap should have taught you better than that. You build business, not take pictures. 
And I'm going to shout out Miss K. Her link is in the description. So is Moochie. Me and Miss K go back and forth. She did not want Lorenzo out. I am thoroughly happy Lorenzo is out because, number one, you've got that daughter-dad love going on. And now you've got the male patriarchy going on that we thought Monet wanted. And she did want it from Mecca. But now all of a sudden that Lorenzo wants to offer that, she don't want it all of a sudden. You know, you know that penis smelly and old to her. She don't want no more of that dirty dick. She don't want no jailhouse dick. She want helicopter dick from Mecca. But I'm here to tell you, Monet, you about to have a showdown between these two behemoths. And I'm almost seeing a little parallel where they might can turn Lorenzo into a ghost type figure that we can all come to love because this episode, he made a lot of good moves that I think a lot of us enjoyed. So leave me your comments on how you've enjoyed Lorenzo this episode. And then Kino introduces his second in command to everybody. And Lorenzo introduces Drew to Kino. Now, did you guys see the way Kino's second in command was looking at Drew? Am, am I detecting a little gay vibes here? Is he going to be the one to replace Everett? Because it's no secret, ladies and gentlemen, Everett ass is dead. I mean, it's no secret. Everett is going to die, and we know it's going to happen. He's one of the people that's going to get off this episode. I mean, this season, excuse me. And then we are ta- we are sitting at the table again with Lorenzo, and he's looking at Kino. Kino done told him, look, bro, I'm not doing the 60-40 with you no more. You know why? Because I'm the leader of the Broad Street Killers, the Broad Street Bullies. Y'all guys heard Biggie Smalls rap about them. And Lorenzo's looking at him like, bro, stop playing with me. Bro. This is my uncle look. You ain't doing nothing. But Keno is serious as hell. That's what he want to do. And this is going to be an adversary. And to be honest with you all, this show, now that they've introduced Lorenzo out of jail, This show doesn't really need any more stars in it at this moment. What they've got contained right now is so good. It's such a great story with so many interweaving parts. You don't need it. You don't really need two bit to show up this season or crystal ball, but I do think that they both will still show up. We get Monet kicking Everett out the house, but she first told Drew to go take out bottles so Everett couldn't keep looking at his ass. You see the way they ever be looking at Drew's ass everywhere it go. He looking, looking for it to shake. And Monet was like, hell to the gnaw on that. You getting out of here. We know you a snitch. You don't need to be in here. And you know Everett is going to be in his feelings. Who knows what the hell. Ever- Everett might go somewhere right now and off his damn self because he thought he was going to get some of them draws tonight. And Monet being the ultimate cop blocker because she's cop block. So this is two kids she's cop or well, three. She's cop blocked all her kids. You remember she cop block came from his hood girl. She's already cop blocked Diana from Tariq. Now she's cop blocking Everett from Drew. So, I mean, Monet is just a big damn cop blocker on top of all the other things she's playing in this role. And then we get to the funniest thing in this, one of the funnier things in this show. The daddy sitting there eating breakfast in bed prepared by Diana. And I was enjoying this every single moment. Look at the look on Monet's face. Her ass is sitting over there starving and shit. Her weave shrinking. She's so hungry. Because Diana done made her daddy dip breakfast in bed and she loves her daddy. And look at the smile on Diana's face. Now, this is a beautiful woman. And when I see the way she looks at her daddy with this smile, it only reminds me of the way me and my daughter look at each other. I was so happy with this. And I was so happy she stood up for herself against the big, bad Monet later on in this episode. And this is the moment she that Monet is like, Diana, where the hell my breakfast at? Uh, Diana was like, I didn't think you was hungry. Well, you know what, Monet? I didn't think you was hungry either. But Monet must have been a little hungry. She wanted her some sausage and some sunny side eggs up, but Diana ain't bringing none. And as they're having this conversation, Lorenzo is just so happy to have his family back. You can just feel the energy from him. The boys bring up boxes of clothes. Lorenzo was like, what, what? I'm not about to wear that. Hell, when I went to jail, Michael Jackson was alive. I was dressing like that. I'm not about to be dressing like you T-Pain looking MFers nowadays. And Drew and every, and Diana's kind of laughing because he's not going to be dressing like his son Kane. 
But in any event, he asked them to go with him over to their shop because he wanted to do a little talking about what's going on. I enjoyed this whole scene really, really well done, and it was fun. And one thing I got to say about 50, um, Courtney Kemp, and everybody that works with the Power Universe, when I say y'all know how to cast a beautiful, sexy cast that's diverse, I had never paid any attention to Jenny until this scene right here while she's in court. Jenny is a hottie too, ladies and gentlemen. And the hotter a person is when they have to be your adversary, the more enticing it makes you feel toward that, the more emotions it invokes you toward that person. And right now, Jenny is at this bail hearing, and we we know she's sleeping with Cooper Sacks. And I'm wondering if she's about thinking Cooper Sacks is up to no good in this bail hearing. But in this hearing, there's no justice for Reek. He's not getting bail because Jenny starts rattling off everything they got on him. More, most importantly, that badge they found in his drawer. And Davis McClain is doing a hell of a job of playing the kind of grimy, I'm about the money, but I do know how to do my job lawyer. And he's in there throwing all this stuff at the judge about a black man can't get a fair trial in America. And that is true. And if you don't want to believe me for that, ladies and gentlemen, I just encourage you to research the statistics on the people who are locked up in jail. It is not even close. 70% of the people locked up in jail is African-Americans. Just Google search it. And Davis McClain is portraying that feeling of the African-American race extremely well. But in any event, there's no bail for Tariq. The judge was under too much pressure in this situation. He's not going anywhere. But then we get our first Easter egg when they go bring Tariq back to jail and Davis and Sachs is talking to Tariq. The first Easter egg for the show that Tate is going to get called Influence. Yes, Power. You do have one reviewer who catches these little Easter eggs that you guys throw out in the 50-verse. So they're talking to Tariq about what can he do to get himself a bail. And Davis says something along the nature of, we need some influence. And Tariq is like, I'm going to get Tate. What is going to be the name of Tate's show? Power, Book 5, Influence. So Tate is already showing you that he's got sprinkles of influence all over the place. And later on in this episode, he had influence over a judge who's sympathetic to the plight of the black man, which I'm telling you guys, you guys said you weren't going to watch that show. That is probably going to be the second or third most popular in the power universe. When you guys get a chance to see just how grimy politics is, it's almost politics is worse than the drug game. It's just that they don't our, our leaders don't glamorize it the way they glamorize the things that put black people in jail. But that's going to be a great show when they get it going. So Kane doing everything he can. Sometimes when you see women who do things to get to the top, our culture has called it sleeping to the top. Well, Kane is trying to buy his way to the top with the dad and went and got him a Jesus piece, a little remix Jesus piece. And the dad is like, Kane, if you really want to look out for me, why don't you introduce me to your plug? And Kane was like, oh, well, you know, dad, let me let me go and um, do what I got to do. Let me go holler at him. Dad's like, no, nah, sit your ass down right here and you call him right now in front of me. And while they're having that discussion and Kane steps away, he goes and talks to Drew. Drew drops the dime on him about the plays that need to be made so they can take over the streets. And he feels like we need to get rid of our competition, which is Keno and the broad street bullies. And the dad is listening and entertaining the idea. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we get to Diana and Monet. And let me play the clip one more time. What you should be doing is thanking me for bringing him home. I killed a man for that money, Diana. And I ain't tell you to do that. You act on real fucking reckless around here. You don't know who you fucking with, little girl. I got two husband out of jail and I'm fucking with you. <laughs> fuck up. What, is there some reason you don't want Poppy home? Get the fuck out of my house before I kill you in here. Yeah, I hope you women are happy because y'all felt like Diana was out of pocket in this moment. But like I said, for all the dads that got daughters and for all the women that feel what I'm saying, overarching story here Monet is just wrong from the jump overarching your daughter wanted to go to college you trying to keep her from college because your ass is scared she's gonna fall in love 
Dad wanted the daughter to go to college, so you you coerce your daughter not to do better with herself. And the one moment she does something to put the family together, you want to choke her? Ladies and gentlemen, that ain't got nothing to do with Diana. That has more to do with the fact that Diana has just become the ultimate cop block to Monet getting out of the game and being with Mecca, jet setting, flying on helicopters and shit, going out riding on ski boats and shit. That's what she's really mad about. This ain't had nothing to do with the disrespect, per se, of what Diana did. This has everything to do with Diana done stepped in, in place of Monet's plan. Diana wanted to be with her daddy. And in this scene, we realize Diana know that there's more to this story than what Monet is letting us know. Diana realized it because Diana said, what, you didn't want my daddy back? Hell no, Monet didn't want your daddy back because Monet done got her another daddy to put behind her fat back and she was going to run with that. But Diana, you done ruined it. And I'm telling y'all, watch out because this could be a diabolical plot here coming up because now Diana could be so angry she might could kill the mama. She might could kill Mecca. We don't know which way Diana is going other than she's going to stick with her daddy. Then we get to Reek talking to his devil daddy, 50 Cent again, telling Reek, look, bro, instead of you trying to bring all this heat and take out all the Tejadas, why don't you think about who's your real enemy? And so he has him cycling through all the things he's been through, thinking about his mama, thinking about um, it's bigger than Kane. And he gets him to a point where he's probably thinking that it's Monet the reason for why he's in this issue. But at the end of the day, I'm wondering when is Tariq going to realize that Kane strings is being pulled by Mecca. Now, we expect Tariq to start becoming more of a ghost-like figure. And Tariq, for the most part, has played chess when others is playing checkers. So he's got to be thinking about what the hell is up with this Mecca and what can I do to rectify that situation. That's what I thought 50 was trying to lead him, but he wound up leading on Monique, uh, Monet. Then they end with this. The devil daddy says, the ones you love the most are the ones that fuck you the most. Mm, 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 mm. A lot of truth in that, my people. And then, Professor Addiction, all I got to say is, you could have saved yourself all this headache and being the butt of all these stories is about to have you out if you would have just stuck by me, your boy Lamont Tyson, and not went and deviated. You could have been having a good life, but no, you about to be off power. And Lauren comes in here to confront your ass, Professor Addiction, because you used her. You used her. She loves Tariq, obviously, as bad as I hate to say that. And now she's got questions for you. And Professor Addiction is just basically trying to wipe her down, telling her to go on about your business. You too young. You don't know nothing. That's basically what she did to her. But Lauren is fiery mad. And Lauren is not going to take this sitting down because we can see a woman who is being motivated more by her heart than her head right now. And she's got a little anger going on for um, Professor Addiction, who, man, mm, it's hard for me to let her go, y'all. I'm sorry. It's hard. But, I, you know, I was in the doghouse with my wife and um, I had to let her go because she's making stupid decisions. But mm, devious woman, man. What can I say? And then... As they're in class and they're talking about what happened with Reed, Prof Rashard Tate gets up here and he makes a very, very eloquent speech to the class about what's going on. And in this moment is when I think the class finally start looking at Tate as not a politician, but as a legitimate human being in society. He basically tells Professor Carey everybody has a price. He gives a scenario for if Tariq is innocent. He gives a scenario for if Tariq is guilty. And the class is all looking at him without it feeling like he's a politician this time. But I got to give a special shout out to the homegirl, Brashonda, who Brashonda's a real one, y'all, because she was calling bullshit on everybody in there talking in this scene. And let us not forget, at the end of the day, is Brashonda going to have to pay because she is really the reason Lauren had those drugs in her drawer. And I wonder if she's going to be made to be held account for what happened. 
We get Mecca and Monet meeting for the first time since Lorenzo's been back. Now, ladies and gentlemen, they do a good job of making Mecca look black. This is what Mecca really looks like on other shows he's played on. He's not really black, but damn, they got him looking black as hell on this show. And he's just basically telling Monet, look, man, I want to see my son. I want to see you. And Monet's like, bruh, my household is hot right now. I ain't got enough room for another penis in my body because um, my, my, my husband is home. Even though I want to be with you, I need to follow the patriarchy. And I know Anita the Diva is rolling her eyes every time I say that. I got to follow the patriarchy even though I don't want to. And Lorenzo's like uh, giving her a phone call. And Monet actually answers the phone while she's there with Mecca, which says, I think her heart is really torn. But Lorenzo calls her because he's hot. He done found out that Tariq, the young man they've been using for course correct, is in jail for double homicide. And she he knows that Dumb Kane and Monet has something to do with it. And he's upset with them for that. And so the very next scene, Monet leaves Mecca and goes over to Davis McClain. And it's like, look, bro, whatever you know on Tariq, I need to know. I'm going to give you 250K. You help me out. Give me the info. Davis McClain greeted ass was like, you think I'm going to take 250 from you? I need a million. Because Davis McClain know what kind of game they in. He know they got money to throw around. And she's like, look, I don't give a damn about um, professional ethics. Whatever you get, I need to know it. And then after that, we get Kane and Monet just having a discussion about they need to keep their business and the things they're doing away from the daddy which sets up what I've been telling y'all the whole entire season before the season even started. It is going to be Lorenzo getting out of jail, Diana and Drew versus Kane, Monet, and whomever else is going to want to help Monet. Probably Mecca. Because at this point, Tariq is probably going to have to do his own thing because he can't trust nobody up in this situation. But I do see them having two characters taking on the form of ghosts. I can see Lorenzo doing it and Tariq. And Tariq ain't going to want to have nothing to do with Monet if she's going to stand by Kane, dumbass side. And in this moment, she's basically telling Kane, look, you know, we still got a play we can do with Course Correct. I need you to go and corral Brayden and let's make this thing happen. And of course, Kane is going to do it. And y'all keep trying to tell me Kane is bright. Yeah, Kane is bright like a nightlight that I keep in my daughter's room. The only place the light escapes is outside, is in her room. He's no brighter than that. That's as bright as his light gets, and he's not. Kane, people just accept it. Kane is a soldier. He's not the brains of the operation. He's a soldier. And in the next scene, he goes to Mecca and is telling Mecca, look, you know, my daddy want to meet you, but if he meets you, he, what use is he going to have for me? And Mecca's like, well, you know, I don't really care about meeting your daddy. Mecca gives him a roll of money. He's like, far as I'm concerned, you the plug. And, of course, Kane think he know what he's doing, but, my people, Kane is going to get hurt. Kane is behaving and acting the same way Kane was behaving and acting in Power Book 3. That's how he's acting. Monet's having to continuously clean up Kane shit, and he's acting just like little Kanan from Power Book 3. And this is a scene when Reek meets with Short Man Tate, who I do love so much. And Short Man Tate was in here giving him a mouthful that was funny as hell. <laughs> he was like, what the hell you think I'm doing here? You're supposed to be getting information on Representative Sweeney. And this is when um, Tariq comes clean and lets him know that, look, I can get that information for you. Can you get me out of here? And of course, Tate has influence, quote unquote, Easter egg. He got it. And then we get back to the family having a discussion about the order that's about to be established. Neither the diva. Here's the male patriarchy. The male is at the head of the table. <laughs> and Monet is just sitting there frustrated. Look at how she's sitting there. She is not happy at all. Diana's on the other side. The boys is on the end. And basically, Lorenzo is telling everybody they're going to be in charge of their own stashes, minus Diana and Monet. He's taking care of the women. Some women like that patriarchy style being taken care of. He's going to let Diana go to school and he's going to let Monet retire. And Monet at first is fighting and she's mad. Monet is doing everything she can to put up a barrier because in her heart she want to be with Mecca. And she's really not trying to accept this reality that she's put herself in 
but you got to accept it. And you could be mad at Diana all you want to if you was doing the order the way it's supposed to be done. At all costs, no matter what the cost is, you get the head of the table out and you people see who the head of the table is. So stop tripping on that beautiful young Diana. She did what she was had to do. And L, if something ever happens to me, get my butt out of jail. And so that's the order. And he gives he gives Monet a little stack of money and tell her to retire, go shop. And I know a whole lot of women on Orange County that would have loved to have Lorenzo sitting at the head of their table to do that. We get in here with this new judge, and ladies, ladies and gentlemen, this gentleman that plays playing this judge, he's on a lot of shows. He's very, very funny. And I love how power goes and gets these type of guys. But this is Kenneth Lucas, the judge. And he has a soft spot for the plight of the African-American man. Thank God somebody does. And guess what? He grants Tariq bail. And at the end of the whole thing, old short man Tate, Sachs wants to know how what the hell does Tariq have on you? But my people, Tate is really short, huh? Look at Cooper Sachs and look at Meth McClain. These dudes look like NBA players. And Tate looked like he getting ready to go to a short man rodeo. And y'all know I love Tate. He's one of my favorite characters on the show. But damn, I'm going to quit calling him short man because I, I didn't know he was that short. He like he my height, like 5'8 or something. But hell, I don't care how tall he is. His influence was bigger than this courtroom because he was able to get Tariq the bail he needs. And I love how he ain't let Cooper Saxon them know what the hell Tariq kind of deal they've got going on with each other but he let her know that hey i have influence then we get Braden and tariq meeting up for the first time since tariq got out of jail and obviously tariq is hot Braden doesn't really know what the hell is going on because tariq has lied to him to keep you know keep him covered and they go back and forth and Braden basically gets down to the bottom it's like look i helped kane get the body up I didn't know what the hell was going on because you kept me in the dark. And Braden is absolutely right. But at the same time, Reek is trying to chastise Braden because Reek did tell him to let him know any time Cain was coming through. And Braden didn't do that because Braden loves this life, y'all. He loves the life. He's addicted to this life. And then in the end, he had to just really put the screws in on Tariq because he's like, look, we both came from dads that had money. And we both chose this life. We didn't have to accept this life, which what a lot of us been saying for a long time. Both of you kids is idiots. You ain't got to do this, but y'all choosing to do it because of whatever uh, twisted reason you would rather go this route than to do a legal gig that could be provided from you by your parents. But anyway, they're doing it. And from there, Braden meets up with Kane, who has this grand plan. He's going to use Braden to keep him close to Tariq and do course correct. And in this moment is when we learn that Braden's number one priority is going to always be Tariq. Braden and Tariq are Ghost and Tommy in their own form because in this scene, Monet is chastising Braden, wanting to know where his loyalties lie. And he winds up lying on behalf of Cain to pretend like he put that badge in the drawer for Tariq so that he can keep Cain at bay when all the while he's doing this because he wants to stay close to the vest with Cain for him and Tariq to know what the hell is going on. Amen. This Braden is something to deal with now. He, he's something to deal with. And then this poor butterfly, Lord have mercy, Lauren, Lord have mercy. How many times does a man got to step on you before you get the picture? How many times is you going to be beaten into Stockholm Syndrome before you realize somebody don't want to deal with you? So she's talking to Tariq. She wants some answers. Tariq ain't really giving her none. He's like, let's come up to the room. She don't want to go up to the room. And he's like, look, Lauren, I'm done with you. And gets ready to walk away. But Lauren is still in love with this dude. That's the look of love, my people. Look at that little face. Oh, I just want to hug it. And just say, you know what? There are other fish in the sea. Move on. But you can't tell someone who's that hung. She's sprung, my people. She is sprung to move on. And he's like, I'm going to give you your brother's key back. We done. But in the midst of all that, Tariq does tell her the reason why Professor Addiction is behaving the way she's behaving. Because she's fucking Zeke. <laughs> That's the way Lawrence said it. <laughs> 
And Lauren, that gave Lauren something to chew on. And the very next scene, what does Lauren do? She hightails her ass right back to Professor Addiction's office. And this is what we heard happen. Until I helped you off those drug charges. Let's be clear, you never helped me. You forced me to wear that wire. Put a gun to your head. You didn't want mommy and daddy to find out that you got caught with drugs in your room. You made your choices. And you didn't warn me about that why. Oh, because you were too busy fucking Zeke? Zeke, you're fucking him. Don't play with me, okay? Oh, yeah. And you can cool believe Lauren going to spill the bean. Lauren is tired of this mess. Lauren ain't playing with her no more. Lauren about to spill these beans. And Professor Addiction is about to lose her guts. Don't be surprised if Lauren is somewhere near a gun that ends Professor Addiction. Even though y'all don't think she's going to die, they can have Professor Addiction die. And then another thing that happened that people be wanting to get mad at me about. I said in a review I did with Nita the Diva that the look Effie gave Tariq was one of, I still like you, I'm just so mad with your ways. And you know what they said? All my fellas agree with me. The fellas said I was right, but the women was trying to say I was wrong. I don't know why when I foretold y'all that Tariq was in a quadrangle this season. He's going to get some Diana. He's going to get some Effie. He's going to get some Lauren. And he's going to get some of Braden's sister. And Effie comes over here to console her boy that she hated so much to start the season. She hated him so much that she wound up getting in his bed, giving him the kisses, and they both got on their pat leather pants, and I hope they, they didn't dry hump because you would have started a fire. I hope they got out the pants and did the nasty because we don't want no fires with pat leather. But Tariq got the Effie draws, ladies and gentlemen. When y'all going to finally give me my cookies? Y'all love getting on my channel when I don't get something right. But when I get it, when I don't get something, when I get something wrong, but when I get it right, y'all disappear on me. Monet runs right back over to Mecca's house and tells him, Mecca, you was my Mecca. I was going to do a pilgrimage to your Mecca. But you know what? Lorenzo's home and this has got to be over. She tells him it's over. Don't mess with my son. He got to go to the NBA. Me and you's over. And she thinks she's just going to walk away. And I made this comment on another live show. I was like, people, does Mecca look like the type of dude you just say no to and walk away? Hell no. This is not the face of I tell you no and that's it. And I remember I got into it with Miss K about how he was kind of forceful. Is that what women want? So ladies, and, and, and the subject we was debating was he's stalking your house knowing that you got a, um, a special signal with a trash can. Is that cute? That sounds like stalking to me. I was concerned then. You really think the guy that stalked your house and moving around trash cans, knocking over dumpsters and shit like a raccoon is going to really just go out your life without a fight? Man, you can cool forget that. And then you done tell him he can't have nothing to do with his own flesh and blood. Monet, it's over. You should have placated this. You should have done the same thing Tasha told Ghost to do. Fuck him until we can get over this bridge. But no, mm-mm. Mm -mm. And then we get Lorenzo, who I'm starting to really, really love in one episode, talking to Diana. He wants to put her in school at St. John's. And she don't want to go to St. John's because she wants to go where her love in Tariq is at, at Stansfield. But more importantly in this episode, Diana is on to the mama tripping. For some reason, Lorenzo is not. Lorenzo just thinks that Monet is just having, you know, maybe taking a back that he's out. What is he going to do when he finds out that she done had a baby with this Dante dude? And I want you guys to put your comments below. In a fight between Lorenzo and Mecca, who y'all taking? I know a lot of y'all going to say Mecca, but I think Lorenzo might prove to be tougher than what he looked now. I'm a, hey, I'm starting to like this Lorenzo dude. And then we get Drew and Lorenzo talking about handling business with Zeke and the plan. So they're talking about the plan that Monet was going to do without him. He wasn't in the exit plan. The exit plan was going to be Zeke playing in the NBA. Daddy won't going to be involved, which further lets you know she was actually done with Lorenzo. She, she had just gone, got tired of Lorenzo. She was tired of having a jail boo because she didn't think he was going to get out. And 
that's cool. I can respect that. But at least be upfront with the man. Like let let him know. Like you know what? I'm tired of you. You're never going to get out. It's been real. We need to get a divorce. We need to be done with this because I'm not satisfied in life. But she wasn't going to do that. She was just going to make this plan go and I guess keep stringing him along is what she was going to do. So I'm happy to see her in pain because I just want you to be honest. Just communicate. And Drew lets him know what the plan was. And then from there, Lorenzo was like, look, I'm the new plan. And Drew, I'm going to listen to you because I believe you're going to be the leader of this family. And we're going to make a move on Keno. As a matter of fact, tonight, Drew, go follow Keno and let's see what his moves are. And then we get the trio. I'm going to call this, I'm gonna call this the trio. Braden, Reek, and Effie. And Effie is helping lead these two brothers into making solid moves. They're going to keep course correct going, but Effie going to be the connect. And they're going to hold this thing together. I also made a prediction that these three would be working together. Told y'all. Told you. And you guys are seeing it right here. And I love this connection going down because this is just more and more drama to add to this story. And this story is packed. Like I said, it doesn't need anybody else extra to add to the story. And then we get Kane with his daddy and his issues with his daddy. He's got daddy issues. He's got mommy issues. He's got brother issues. Kane just got issues. He wants to be the leader. He wants what Drew got. And Kane and, and Lorenzo's telling Kane, look, bro, you can't do that because you're not ready. You're just not ready. And Kane keep making stupid mistakes, letting his pride get in his way, letting his anger get in his way. He has an opportunity to let the daddy meet the plug, but he's not doing it because he's worried about his position. And at the end of the day, the daddy is like, look, bro, do you want to be my son or do you want to be my boss? And ladies and gentlemen, that was a boss ass line for Lorenzo. I am really digging Lorenzo and I can't wait to get on the thing and just give it to Miss K this week because she hates Lorenzo, which is part of the reason why she didn't want Diana to do what she did. Anyway, she wanted Monet to put hands on Diana. Then we get a phone call. Tariq is calling Monet via Effie and she's just letting Monet know that, look, I'm still here, but because I got this lockbox on my leg, I can't do nothing. My connection to you is going to be Effie running things on my behalf. And then we get a showdown between Effie and Monet. But one thing I want to know is how is Monet going to feel when she realized that Effie and Diana been getting down? And because, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of y'all feel some some kind of attraction energy between Effie and Diana. And I'm wondering, would power go the route of having Effie, Tariq and Diana in some kind of a threesome? Hell, why not? Because at the end of the day, both of these women got strong feelings for Tariq and they both in the game and Tariq don't want to muddle up the waters. And Monet is in the middle already telling Tariq on the phone, you shoot, I'm a slaughter, and you're going to have to keep all this together. But we do know Effie is tough as nails. Effie can handle her own, and Effie ain't scared of no damn Monet. So this is just a diabolical stew, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to eventually boil over. And I love the line Effie gave Monet because Monet was giving her the hard time. You effing Tariq, you laying it on thick. And Effie's just like, look, we can we can make real money together or we can make no money apart. And that was a real line. Monet took the line and went on about her damn business. And then we get poor Lauren, poor heartbroken Lauren. It's caught all up in the legal system. She's going in there talking to D.A. Jenny about she wants out the deal. And Jenny is telling her, you need to learn how to read. And, I, and Lauren should have been like, bitch, I'm in college. I know how to read. But the issue is here, she did sign the contract. There was no legal representation. And I'm about wondering, could Lauren get out of this situation? Because there was no legal representation when she signed the contract. And you guys see Cooper Sacks stalking the door, trying to come up with a plan. And Cooper Sacks might be the one to make the plan, I'm telling you guys, for Lauren. Did you have legal representation when they coerced you? And she's going to be like, hell no. Well, he's going to work with her and he's going to be a double agent. He's going to have Lauren working with him to help out with whatever's going on with Tariq. That's the beginning of how they're going to get out of it. 
And then they start giving us the crescendo to the end in which at this point in time, Mecca's like, man, the hell with this. Monet, you think you're really going to leave me? I'm about to be burned in bed on your ass. Post your comments if you guys, grandparents or your mamas made y'all watch Burn in Bed as a kid. He texts Kane to say, look, I'm ready for the meetup. And obviously this is going to be nothing more than a judging of the penises between him and Lorenzo. He just wants to see the man that is about to be in between his son and his woman and probably try to use him too, ladies and gentlemen, maybe even get him taken out. This story is going to be going on for at least three more seasons because they've got so much story they can tell with just this thing going on with Lorenzo and Mecca that you can do at least two seasons with that. And then we get your boy, Mecca, just, you know, hanging out somewhere, come to find out his ass is hanging out looking at his son shooting hoops. I'm telling you guys, somebody a stalker, ladies, stay away from him. Fellas, stay away from stalkers now. Stay away from them. And then we get Braden getting the book he needs so that he can get it to Tate to go ahead and handle that Sweeney business. But at the end of the day, the sister is going to have to come and help that situation. And then the very last thing we see is the letter that Reek got in jail from his daddy. He's burning the last remnants of ghosts. For all my people that keep thinking ghosts is going to come back, there's no more ghosts. This is the end of Ghost. Reek is going to continue to talk to his devil daddy. And I like how Effie came and was consoling his feelings and basically told him, you know what? Your daddy didn't really know you. And that's what gave him motivation to burn this damn letter up. You don't need that letter, Reek. You your own man. Your daddy missed out. I'm here for you. You got these Effie draws. And you know I like girls too, which means I'm going to let you and Diana do what y'all want to do with me. So, ladies and gentlemen, leave me all your comments. Be sure to catch us as we go live this week. I will be going live Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night. Monday is with the whole crew. Tuesday, I'll be with Miss K and Moochie. And then on Wednesday night, I will be going live to do an interview with Hightown's own Atkins Estimate. He plays a seat toe on Hightown. And then I got Chota who was the muscle on Hightown. He's coming Thursday. His name is Dominique Santana. We're going to keep the Hightown talk going. We're going to keep the power talk going. And I want you guys to keep me going by subscribing, turning on notifications, and joining me on Instagram, and also downloading the podcast. And until that next Sex is Hell video, I'll see you.